Hey, this is Leo for Actualize.org, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how to relieve stress. Okay, welcome back. How to relieve stress. All right, so let's get into this. Stress, all of us are stressed, right? Who is not stressed in this modern crazy world? with all the stuff that we have on our plates, we are living a really 27 hour a day cycle in only 24 hours. And we're trying to cram it all in there. We're so overwhelmed. Our boss is driving us mad. Our clients are driving us mad. Our spouse is driving us mad. Our girlfriend or boyfriend's driving us mad. Our kids are driving us mad. Our task list and our calendars are driving us mad. Our emails, our phones are blowing up. How do we get peace in this life? <laughs> okay, it can be hard, right? Especially now when everything is on, everything's interconnected, we've got the internet, we've got cell phones. You literally are always at the beck and call of somebody else 24 seven, right? Whether it's your parents or your business, your career, your boss, somebody's always nagging you for something. So how do we relieve this stuff? And how do we also relieve ourselves of the pressure that we put our, on ourselves from these lofty goals that we have, you know, especially if we're out there and we're living an ambitious kind of life, the kind of life that we're here actually as that org espousing, you know, the charge kind of life where you're not just sitting back on your couch watching television all day, where your life is about going out there and living something bigger. It's about contributing your greatest gifts. It's about fulfilling your full potential. It's about learning and challenging yourself and living on your edge. I tend to find that when you're doing that, you tend to get stressed sometimes, right? You get stressed from the gym workouts, you get stressed from the meditation sessions you do, you get stressed from staying on your diet, you get stressed from pushing your business forward. So I feel all that myself. So it's good to have some techniques. So what I'm gonna give you here is some techniques and I'm gonna give you some understanding about what is causing your stress so you can kind of start to get a little handle on this. All right, so first of all, the most important point, if you take away one thing, I want you to take away this is that stress, even though it feels like it's coming from the world, it's actually coming from yourself. You are putting stress on yourself. All of your stress, I don't care how bad it is, is it's all self-created. This is actually a deep point. This is an advanced self-development point that I'm sure most of you will not be able to appreciate. If you've been doing personal development though, and if you've been following along with my videos, and you've really been thinking about this stuff, then you're starting to get a sense of this inner outer world distinction that I talk about. And you start to get a sense that really, it's not the circumstances that are creating the feelings in your life, but it's your reactions to those circumstances. This is something that's been echoed literally for millennia from Western old school ancient philosophy, from Stoicism to, um, from, the ancient Stoics to ancient Greeks and ancient Romans, Eastern philosophies, modern self-help gurus. If you study this material, you start to understand that there's something to this idea. And at first, it kind of just dawns on you that yeah, maybe there's something true to this. And then as you start to actually take responsibility, take ownership of what you're feeling in your life, take ownership of your feelings and your thoughts, and you just commit to taking full responsibility for it, not blaming anything outside yourself. And you start to become more conscious and you start to become more aware throughout your day of really what is going on? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Why is this happening? It dawns on you that you are creating all of it. Your ego is creating all of it. The struggle you're facing in your life is being created by a need to uphold your self-image, to live up to your ego and that this is entirely avoidable if you go through the personal development work that is necessary. So right now, maybe you're just getting introduced to this idea and it might seem a little bit like, whoa, I don't know what he's talking about. This doesn't apply to me. First of all, I guarantee you that it applies to you. It applies to every human being because we all have the same basic biological psychology. But the deeper idea is here. I want you to start to say to yourself, okay, maybe there's something to this and just open your mind to it and start to be a little bit more aware of how you are responsible for the stress that you are creating in your life. And you are responsible both for the good and for the bad. And by responsible, I don't mean that you're guilty 
and that you're blameworthy and that you need to be judged for the stress you're creating in your life. Just the fact that you are creating it or allowing it. Now this is a big, big shift to make in your mindset because up to this point, you probably have not been very conscious of how much you have been responsible, not blameworthy, responsible for the stress that you've been creating. That means that if you're stressed at work, realize that, okay, you are putting yourself into that environment. You chose to work there. You chose to take those projects on. You chose to start that business. You chose to be in that relationship. You chose to be in this marriage. All of these things are conscious choices or maybe unconscious choices, but you made these choices, right? And you always have the option of backing out of them or tinkering with them to make sure that they're working better for you. And so you might be saying, well, yeah, sure, I chose to be in my marriage, but I didn't want my marriage to be as stressful as it is right now. Okay, granted, but take responsibility. You got to stop this making of excuses where you say, well, I did choose this, but I didn't choose the bad parts of it. No, you chose that thing and it comes with the good and the bad. And in fact, that good and bad, that distinction doesn't exist in the external world. It only exists in your mind. So the reason I'm hammering on this idea, and I'm going to go into more practical techniques that you can use to reduce your stress, is because this is hitting at the root, at the root cause. I don't want to just give you little band-aids over this wound. This wound is coming from the fact that you're not recognizing the cause. Once you start taking responsibility for these things, then you're going to start to see opportunities. Opportunities are going to open up for you. Windows are going to open up for you. You're going to see like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be working at that job so much. Maybe I shouldn't be taking on that new project because actually what I want is I want some peace time with my family. I want some time to myself. I want some time to go fishing. I want some time to go read that book that I wanted to, write, to read or maybe that book that I wanted to write whatever, maybe start that blog that I've been dreaming of starting, you know, starting to realize that maybe you start to realize that that relationship you're in, that marriage you're in, it's not really healthy for you and that it's too stressful for you and that it's time to, to change it. There's nothing wrong with making changes. So start to realize that, start to realize how you're creating your own stresses. So <clears throat> as far as actually how to reduce your stress and how to relieve it, here are some ideas. Another distinction I want to introduce here is that there are good ways to relieve stress and bad ways. What does this mean? A good way is a healthy way. It means it's a way that's going to empower you, it's going to enrich you, and it's going to put you into a stronger position than you were before. A bad way is a disempowering way, which is basically a crutch that is maybe relieving stress in the short term, but it's actually robbing you of your life and your potential and your energy in the long run. And maybe it's creating even more stressed down the road on a long-term basis. So bad is kind of like using a credit card to pay for that impulse purchase that you've got, right? It might be fulfilling at the beginning, but it's really not smart long-term. So this is what I mean by good and bad. Here are some good ways. All right, number one, exercise, physical activity, sports. This is huge. So going to the gym, great way to relieve stress, whether it's strength training, cardio, then sports, whether you're doing sports at the gym, team sports, getting involved in sports somehow is a great way. I actually find that, you know, after high school and college, we kind of tend to fall out of the whole sports scene, but it's a good way to get yourself back um, and into doing something that's like really fun and stress relieving is to get yourself into some sort of league sport, you know, whether it's soccer, or maybe a softball team, or even just maybe mentoring kids and being out there, being out in nature in fresh air, moving your body. This is important. This starts to release chemicals in your brain that actually start to make you feel better, starts to relax you. Just the fact that you're moving your body puts you in a flow state, gets you out of that self-consciousness mode. Even simple things like going for a walk or taking a hike, taking just kind of a, a lazy bike ride, those can all be great ways to unwind. Another one is reading, reading books, read something high quality. Another one is meditation and yoga. <clears throat> oh man, I'd probably put this at the top of the list. <clears throat> if you get involved with meditation, at the beginning it can be tough to build that practice, but <clears throat> the long-term benefits of that are just amazing. Right now, <clears throat> I'm about six to eight weeks into my meditation practice where I'm doing meditation uh, every day for an hour. And the effects I'm seeing on stress relief there are just incredible, incredible. So I highly encourage you to get involved with meditation if you've never, uh, if you're, well, even if you've tried it, but if you haven't built a habit of it, <clears throat> I really encourage you to build 
that habit. And I have other videos that will tell you how to do that. All right, next, listening to music is a great way to unwind, slow your mind down. <clears throat> Another great way is family time. Create some quiet time with your family, whether it's around the dinner table, playing a board game, just having a conversation, going for a family walk, going to you know the baseball game, some sort of family activity. Whatever that is, just having time to do that so that you're not bothered by other stuff. That can be really rewarding. It's gonna increase your happiness, relieve all your stress. And if you have some sort of creative hobby that you engage in, or think about picking one up, whether it's learning how to play the guitar, how to play the piano, maybe arts and crafts, maybe <clears throat> you've got some sort of writing project that you wanna work on, maybe you've got your car you wanna work on, your mechanical tinker type of person, you wanna get your hands dirty, you know, whatever that is, have some sort of creative hobby in your life, at least one that you like to engage in and that you're building skill in. This is gonna be a great way to relieve stress for you. So those are some good ways. Now let's talk about some bad ways. These are ways that you do not wanna use. One, gambling. <laughs> do not gamble, whether it's online or here in Las Vegas or anywhere else. Don't gamble. This is a bad way to relieve stress. It's also not very smart for you financially. Shopping, compulsive shopping. This has been a problem actually for me uh, is that sometimes I will get compulsive about my shopping and go on Amazon, start buying shit up that I don't need. Stop that, stop buying stuff. The buying is not making you happy in the long run, right? It's just a short little, little stimulus, a little excitement, but it's not doing anything for you positive in the long run. Smoking, drinking, drugs, any kind of chemical addictions or abuses that you're partaking in, definitely cut those out. Those are not helping your stress in a healthy way. They're also destroying your body, which is gonna start to show and manifest itself in all sorts of bad ways as you age and grow older. So get that out of your system right now. Video games, not a good way to relieve stress. It's kind of a low consciousness way to do it. Internet browsing, also not good. Television, also not good. If you're addicted to watching negative news, cable news can be very addicting. Even reading the newspaper, just being too plugged into that kind of stuff, being plugged into gossip. Uh, get, that, get that off. Get that off your whole radar. This is preventing you from living that kind of extraordinary life that you are capable of living. So stop all that stuff. And it's actually probably creating more stress down the road for you. Because that smoking that you're doing, those drugs you're taking, that overeating that you're partaking in, you know, that compulsive shopping, that internet watching, that TV watching, it might relieve some stress right now, in the minute, in the hour, but it's, it's actually building up other stresses like guilt, procrastination, laziness, lack of productivity. All of that is being built up over days and weeks and years, and that is that is destroying you. That's creating more and more stress, right? It's creating a lower quality life for you. So those are my ideas on how to relieve stress. Pretty simple. These have been documented, well documented. A lot of these ideas that I'm sharing with you have actually been scientifically proven with studies that have been done. So go ahead and right now commit to taking some action. Number one, I want you to identify what is causing you the most stress in your life. Just be conscious of it. Don't judge yourself for it, just let's identify it. Is it your work and what's specifically at work? Is it your relationship and what's specifically in your relationship? Identify that and take responsibility for it. Don't blame it on anyone else. Even at work, don't blame it on your boss. In your relationship, don't blame it on your spouse or your girlfriend or boyfriend. Take responsibility for it. So that's number one. Number two is I want you to commit to one thing that you're gonna do that's gonna start to relieve your stress. What is that gonna be for you? Are you gonna have to start uh, playing some sports? Do you want to do some exercise? Do you wanna maybe read some more? Set aside some family time? Set aside some time for listening to music? Pick up a creative hobby that you've been dreaming of picking up but you just haven't taken any action on? Commit to one of those, whatever's gonna fit with your personality and your life right now. And then the last thing is I want you to really look and identify one bad thing that is a crutch that you're using. It's one of these bad stress relievers that you really need to pull yourself out of. So gambling, shopping, smoking, internet, television. 
identify one of those and commit to pulling yourself out of it. For most of you, I can bet television is something that you can pull out right now, cut out, and that's gonna give you a huge quality of life improvement. So try television if you don't know uh, anything else, or if you have something else, maybe drugs, uh, shopping that you're addicted to, pull yourself out of that. All right, so those are gonna be some great ways for you to start to get a handle on your stress. This is Leo, I'm gonna be signing off. As always, please comment. I wanna hear what you think about this and other ways that you have found for relieving stress, what's worked for you. Go ahead, like this and share this please because I really wanna spread this, this content around. I think it's useful and if you find it useful, share it with your friends and your colleagues at work or whoever. And then of course, if you're really buying into this idea of living to your full potential and you wanna really take your life to that next level and you wanna be out there living your purpose, sharing your gifts with the world, and you know that this is something that you were destined to do, and that you just haven't quite figured out how to stay on track or how to get on track or something's been holding you back, then I want you to follow along with me because this is what Actualized Ulrich is about, is we are here to help you figure this out, live up to your full potential, give you the resources, the knowledge, but also the emotional support and the inspiration to be out there working on it every single day, all right? And the best way to do that is to subscribe to my newsletter at actualize.org where you are gonna get exclusive updates. And right now we've got a couple of awesome free bonuses. These are killer bonuses. We've got a 19 part video series, over 90 minutes about busting your top limiting beliefs. We've also got a chance for all my subscribers to get two hours of coaching that I give away every month. I'm a life coach. I love to coach, coach people and work on their problems. So I'll do that. Uh, with one of my subscribers every month from the newsletter. And those are just some awesome bonuses, but then also you're gonna get all the exclusive articles that I publish every single week to keep you on track with this stuff. And we're not only working on your stress, we're also working on your career, we're working on your life purpose, we're working on a really a deep understanding and a total mastery of who you are. I love this, this is what, it's, this is what life is about for me. And I wanna get you on board with that vision because I, I think there's so much there. There's so much there. And I know that you know that there's so much there for you to grow into. So check out actualize.org.